What's going on everybody? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. And today what I have for you, we're going to be diving just a little bit deeper into editing your Vimeo OTT theme by using CSS code. Stick around for it right after the All right, before we get into that, this is just a quick little, I guess, reminder, not really a reminder, but the price for the Vimeo OTT quick start, quick, oh, quick start, quick start course guide tutorial is $14.99. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Be honest with you. Maybe $39.99 was a little too high for people or whatnot, if the case may be. And I want people to have easy access to this to go ahead and they can get their Vimeo OTT website off the ground. And this course takes them from start to finish, from the time that you have to upload content in the actual order that you have to put it in because there are some steps regarding the functionality and forms that form fields that you're supposed to fill out and where that those go um, to the very end of you getting your site deployed. So it's $14.99. Uh, this is definitely for people who, who hit me up and have all these beginner questions. This is something that you can easily get and go ahead and, and address those things within the quick start course. So that way you don't really need to hire me per se or blow me up in terms of trying to figure out what to do with things. And if things are still confusing, then hit me up. My Google number will be in the description box below or you can shoot me an email message as well. Uh, jumping right into this without talking too much about anything else, okay? The CSS part, so for example, this is for people also if you're not an, a web developer, I still advise you to go seek a professional web developer when you're trying to do deep programming stuff, even front end display. When you're trying to even mess around with the, the, the look and feel of your website, um, that's what we consider the front end and everything else and even certain key behaviors on what you're playing with. You still want to consult with the web developer to actually help you. Now, I specialize in CSS. So this is kind of going to be my wheelhouse, but I'm going to show you just going a little bit deeper. If you're a beginner and you can't afford a web developer, um, little things that you can copy and paste to make tweaks here and there in terms of your theme at this moment in time. So what you're going to do, these three little dots, if you're in Google Chrome, you're going to click on these three little dots. You're going to go to more tools, developer tools. Now, that's cute, the little Vimeo OTT display here in the comment section. So what you're going to do is you want to click on this arrow that's pointing towards the box. And that way, you when you start highlighting or hovering over a lot of the elements that exist on a page, you can easily pinpoint what where the code actually is for these elements. All right, that's the whole purpose of doing it like this. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move this box over so you can actually see this CSS panel, because once you actually click on an actual element, okay, you'll see that the CSS code over here will change as well as direct you to where exactly that element actually is. Now, you may already be thinking, well, this video does me no good if I'm a beginner and I don't really know what to do. Well, just, just hold on, just stay with me just for a little bit, all right? Because like I said, if you can't, if you need to make some quick changes and you can't afford a web developer and don't want to like try to ask somebody to you know, try to get you to do these changes for a one-time fee of $500 or whatnot um, because my time is valuable and I want to be able to make these videos to help you, then this is going to be worth it. So let's say, for example, I don't like how these three elements are shifted over here to the right, okay? So I'm going to now click on this. It looks like, now, let me tell you the difference between these. If I'm hovering over these single elements, that's not what I want. I want to actually try to, because I'm imagining that these three elements are actually contained to the box. If I hover lightly over this, you see that there's another element contained in this image, okay? And it's a list element. From the judging from up there, it's a list element. But from over here, this is a whole entire list in and of itself. So just looking at it, I could tell the padding on the inside is, um, the padding on the inside may be just uh, focused more to the right to push it over to the left. That's just a guess. So I'm just gonna go ahead and actually click on it and see what is going on here. Okay, now before you copy and paste it, you can actually play around with this code um, here within the CSS, within the CSS itself, so you can actually see how it's actually working right now at this moment in time. So judging from the looks of it, the padding left and the margin set from left and right. So I was wrong. So it's not the padding; it's the margin set from left and right is zero. But if I make this at a Let's say a 25 px what happens 
Okay, so the minute that I even added that number, we see that it shifted this entire element over to the um, to the right sum. Okay, it pushed on the left hand and pushed it over to the right. So let's see if I added it yeah, even more. If I went to do 100 px, okay, it's going to shift it over even more. But keep this in mind that this is also influencing other elements. Okay, so I'm going to just shift this again to 150 to make it as centered as possible. Maybe 200. All right, that makes the elements too small. But from the right now, everything is kind of because we have the menu that exists, and I have this panel up. But this doesn't really give us a true feel, but we're heading in the right direction right now in terms of adjusting and affecting our CSS elements. So I wanted this more centered, even for the size that it was. I just wanted it just a little bit centered. OK, and then we have here a class name, which is let me see here has two classes under a small block grid two, and then medium block grid. OK, so we have the medium block grid full container width. All right which is going to be this element right up here. Okay, but the small block grid. Okay, let's see if we can find anything. Okay, so these are all global elements down there as they affect the entire style sheet if you don't see a specific class name with it. So you wanna kinda of pay attention on your HTML to see what the actual class name is and find it over here with it. From the looks of it, the class name with this is actually going to be full with container and that's actually here within the parent element that's containing that which it says full with container so if I wanted to I can probably like let me copy and paste this and we're going to put this more so over here okay let me click off of that so we can make some changes okay and that's only going to affect oh there we go I passed it up okay so that's only going to affect the element that I wanted to have. So now we now that I leave it at that, I'm going to close this out. Okay, I'm going to close that out. All right, perfect. Now in a tablet or a mobile element, this is going to look very different. So you have to keep that in mind as well. That's where another web developer comes in because now you're talking about using the um, oh man, I forget media elements. You're talking about using the media query elements in order to affect it on mobile or tablet and kind of understand um, sizing those on each and every different device. All right. So uh, I've been doing the CSS thing for a long time right now. So if you want to make some simple adjustments, you're a beginner, uh, you're intermediate with using Vimeo OTT. This is something that you can do. You can just go over there and play with the CSS uh, code in a developer toolbox and, and before you even paste it over you can kind of play around with the numbers see how it affects it because I think with things like margins and paddings uh, you can kind of understand just from reading that what that actually means but if you don't you know that that's where you want to get into maybe hiring a, a Vimeo TT specialist such as myself <laughs> or just a web developer in that matter so Anyway, man, I'm trying to give y'all cheat codes here to save y'all some money so y'all don't have to sit up here and hire somebody for Googles and goggles of money. We're trying to make these changes on your own, all right? So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to kind of show you like these little tricks here without trying to go sound too technical because I'm making this for an audience who are just trying to do the Vimeo TT, setting up their website on their own without trying to hire external help. But remember, I am always available and I don't come for free right now at this moment. I'm not gonna say I don't come for cheap. I'm working with, I can work with you, but I don't come for free. You can also not only check out my YouTube channel with these other ones, but once again, check out my Vimeo OTT quick start course. That's going to have everything that you need to help set you up as fast as possible from start to finish. God bless y'all. Thank you for watching again. I'll see you in the next video.